This tutorial explains the process of adding key signatures in Sibelius 7, the effect this has on MIDI playback, as well as how adding key signatures differs from transposition. Setting the key signatures in Sibelius is a process of writing the accidentals that call out the key signature, just as if you were writing a score by hand. First, I'll change the key with nothing selected, using the shortcut key K. This will open a drop-down of all the key signatures. This current piece is in A minor, so I'll set it to something with a lot more accidentals like C sharp minor. Selecting your key turns your cursor blue, and then I can click the time signature at the beginning of the piece to change the entire piece. Another possibility is, again with nothing selected, right-click anywhere on the composition and a drop-down will appear with key signature listed. Select this and, again, select the time signature to change the key of the entire piece. A third option is to go to the Notations tab in the ribbon. Click on the Key Signatures drop-down and select your key from there. Regardless of the method you use to change the key of your music, the results are the same. You've added a key signature, and just like adding a key signature to a piece of music tells the musician which accidentals to play, adding the key signature to Sibelius also tells the MIDI playback which notes to play, sharp, flat, or natural. If you want to change the key for only part of the piece, follow any of these three processes and, instead of clicking on the time signature with the blue arrow, select another note or bar line anywhere on the piece. This generally places the key signature after the selected note or bar line. You can also reverse any of these three processes by simply highlighting something and then selecting the new key. I'll highlight the time signature, press K, then select my key, and the key signature will be added. This can be done at any point in the score, such as selecting this bar line, selecting the key signature in the Notations menu, and selecting my key. If you're going to use the right-click method, do not right-click directly onto the highlighted note. This will not give you the option of changing the key signature. Instead, highlight your element, then right-click on a white space within the composition. Sibelius does not automatically change notes from a key change, but it does add the accidentals in order to keep the notes the same. This is especially obvious when you change the key from something like A minor with few or no accidentals to something like C sharp minor with several sharps. Let's hear a bit of the piece in its original A minor key. Then I'll change the key to C sharp minor and play it back again. It's exactly the same. Now I'll move all the notes down, transposing the melody into the correct position on the clef. A quick glance tells you that accidentals exist that weren't in the original piece. And if you play the piece back, it doesn't sound quite right. So, simply adding the key signature does not do exactly what we want if our ultimate goal is transposition. This is where the handy transpose function comes into play. The transpose function is found in the note input section of the note input tab of the ribbon. Let's highlight our entire piece by pressing Ctrl A, then click the transpose button. Using the transposition dialog box, I'll transpose by key down to C sharp minor. I want to transpose the key signatures, but first, let's look at what happens if I don't. The notes are moved down to the appropriate place for the new key, and the chord symbols have changed, but each measure has to enter the new key's accidentals. This might be something that you actually want, but for this case, since I'm changing the key of the entire piece, and key signatures exist to eliminate the excess clutter that adding accidentals to each measure causes, I want to transpose the key signature. So I'm going to undo all that work, and this time I'm going to use the shortcut key Shift-T to open the transpose box. Again, I'll transpose down to C-sharp minor. This time, though, I'll select Transpose Key Signatures. Click OK, and the entire piece has been transposed to the new key, chords and all. This can also be done to transpose to a specific interval. Let's go ahead and move this piece into D minor. I'll just make sure the entire piece is highlighted, then press Shift-T. I can then select Transpose by Interval, and since I'm only going up half a step from C-sharp to D, I'll select Minor Diminished and Second. Click OK, and our piece has been changed to D minor. This was a simple example. Transposing a lead sheet is far less complicated than transposing a multi-instrument score, but the processes are basically the same. The lead sheet used in this tutorial is part of our public domain project series and is available at steedproductions.com or by following the link in the description. If we've failed in our goal to make this video clear, concise, and helpful, or if you have any questions about this tutorial or about related topics in Sibelius 7, please let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching and stay tuned.